I'm Samantha Salzinger. I'm a visual artist. I work primarily with photography, but I consider myself an artist uh, more than I would categorize myself as a photographer. I'm an artist who works with the medium of photography. A lot of them have been painters. So really early on in my 20s, I was interested in photographing women, people, but primarily women. And one of the biggest influences was um, Vermeer. I was really interested in the way he used light, which is a lot of what photographers use. I was interested in the way, I find his paintings very photographic. In fact, I, if I'm not mistaken, he did use a um, camera obscura, or whatever it was called at the time, to make a lot of his paintings. And there was something about the psychology of, in particular, the women in his paintings, where you know they would be doing some mundane task like putting on a necklace or pouring milk, and it would be so much about this mundane moment that it became psychological, and you became so interested in what is going on with this woman. And I, I was fascinated by that, and I think I tried to emulate that. So I think from early on I felt like a photographer that works like a painter, really early on. Later on, another influence of mine when I was working with the plastic surgery work, a lot of that work was in sur surgery rooms and there was a specific kind of light and the images were very dramatic and there was a lot of blood and gore and I was, I was influenced by Caravaggio because it was so dramatic and the lighting and the, you know, and all these people being nailed to crosses and, and it felt like it had that same kind of feeling. So I, and now, the work I'm doing now is influenced by Caspar David Friedrich. You know, it's like that sublime 19th century romantic but yet a little foreboding, you know, I think Friedrich of those painters has a little bit more, like the tension is almost in the sweetness of his, of his paintings that I find um, compelling. I guess I feel like I've always been drawn, it's almost like an addiction, that's what it feels like, an addiction, like I've always been drawn to be an artist, always. Um, there's something comforting about the process of making art for me. There's something fulfilling and satisfying like nothing else. I often have referred to myself as like a junkie. It's like, I don't know what heroin feels like, but for me making art is a little like that because there are times when I think this is just, I'm not making any money. I'm losing money. It's eating up all my time. I don't know why I would do this other than there's some kind of, the, the act of creation is so, it's, it's, I don't know how to describe it. It's, I guess, blissful. <laughs> you know? So that's why I make it. <laughs> They started smaller and they have built, they've grown over time. Now I work on a, a table, it's about seven feet, like five feet by seven feet, about that. And, um, you know, one of the things I get asked about all the time with these dioramas is where do you keep them? Where are the dioramas? And they're not physical, they're not these contained physical things that are done and then they get set aside. They're made specifically for a camera, so when you see them in person, they're actually not really as impressive as they look as a photograph. So, you know, it's like a stage set. That's nothing like many of the things, like if you were to peer around them, they'd be hollow. Ultimately, like when this when the series first started, my interests were about the the extinction of man. That's where it really started. This idea of man be, making themselves extinct. I also think it's about the anxiety of the 21st century from the beginning of 2000, the beginning of 1999 to 2000. There was this like when that midnight was going to hit. It was like 
planes were going to fall out of the sky. Literally, people were concerned that cat catastrophe was going to hit at that moment. And since then, there's been this building, instead of it like alleviating this building, you know, there's the the mythologic, well, I don't know whether it's mythological, but the 2012 Mayan calendar, there's the collapse of the economy, there's all of these things that are creating more and more and more. The, the mantra of the, for, of the first part of the 21st century seems to be anxiety of extinction. So I became really interested in that idea, and um, I, I wanted to do it through this idea of landscape. So I guess I feel like my artwork is a is revealing myself to people whether I want it to or not. And so I do look at my own work and especially in retrospect I look back. You know, like I look at that outer space series and they're so isolated. You know, literally in outer space they're desolate, isolated places and when I look back at that time in my life, you know, it was just before my stepfather passed away, he was in a nursing home dying of, you know, with dementia and I felt so isolated at that time and it's so interesting that I just I do work very intuitively. I make what I feel to make at the time, and I don't usually intellectualize it too much in that moment. But then afterwards, I look back and go, "Wow, it totally makes sense that that's what I was that's what I was doing, and that's what ended up coming out of that series or of that time in my life." Photography has a really interesting relationship to the real. And because um, I, I have even questioned myself, well, why am I even taking a photograph? Why wouldn't I just paint this? What is the purpose of a photograph? And I think it is photography's relationship to the real. We are, we look at photography as this faithful recorder of reality. Even in the face of digital media, we still suspend our belief when we look at a photograph and it's never never even from the beginning of photography ever been reality ever you know and one of the I think that seems so interesting to me about it would be an example of like somebody taking a trip to I don't know the pyramids the Grand Canyon someplace you know spectacular and they take their photo their photographs of wherever they've gone and then they want to show it to all their friends and family and the Generally, unless they're like a master photographer, the photographs are pretty mundane. You know, there's, there's, you know, um, tourists walking around wearing goofy clothes, or you know, the lighting's crappy. And the reason why the person doesn't recognize how crappy the photograph is is because it's jogging their memory of the experience of being in the place. But the photograph itself does not really reveal the experience of being in the place. Now, when you look at, I'll use Ansel Adams as an example. You know, Ansel Adams' photographs are not really the experience of the place either. They're just that he's a master of framing, he's a master of light, you know, the whole zone system of knowing how to make it look doesn't really look that way in reality. It actually doesn't look like that in reality at all. You don't have that kind of depth. If you don't have 64 uh, f-stop in your eyes, you see this in focus and then you see that in focus. It doesn't happen like that in the world. So he's creating a way for you to look at Yosemite that is not really the way you see Yosemite. So I don't really believe that actually, I believe I'm not really doing anything different other than that I've set up something in my space that I've physically created. So I don't know that there is any difference, which is why I think it's interesting. I mean, I find that interesting. That's always the question. And I also think it's the tension. It is the underlying tension in the photos is because they are, in fact, photos. You know, when I did that outer space series, when I showed them, I remember it was a lot of people that weren't, you know, it was for the consortium grants. There was a lot of people there that weren't familiar with my work. And they came and I got the question over and over again by people, how did you take these pictures? My first thought was, are they asking me how I made them? And then I realized they were asking me how I took them. Some of them to me look so utterly fake, but because it was a photograph, they would ask me, and I got a little like punchy towards the end of the night, and I'd say, well, I got a suit from Nassau, and they let me, and people were like, really? I'm like, no, not really. But because it's a photograph, they just wanted to believe it. So I think there's something interesting about that, too, that I, I really do like to play with. I am very interested in metaphysical ideas. I am. And even though I don't have specific things I want people to get from my work, 
there's no way for me to divorce myself as a person and my ideas about the world and the work that I make. So I do read the Bible, both the Old Testament and the New Testament, and I actually find it fascinating. You know, I'm not a fundamentalist, but I do find it fascinating. I am interested in conspiracy theories. I am. You know, I'm interested in um, alternative ways of looking at the world. So, yeah, it is going to come through in the work that I make. So, and I don't mind that. I think it's okay. <laughs> So I would say, you know, if you don't have that kind of real true desire to make the work just for the sake of making the work, you really probably really shouldn't do it anyhow. You really should just go a commercial route. If your real concerns, and I'm not saying it's a valid concern to think about what kind of profession you're going to have or what kind of job you're going to have, but if those are your primary concerns, you really should just study accounting and not really because... This is a lifestyle you've got to be willing to take a lot of chances and just throw caution to the wind and say, I want this. And you got, and the other, it's not even advice. It's, none of this is really advice. This really has to do with, you have to be so hungry for it. You have to want it in a way that you can't do anything but do this. Otherwise, you, you know, so it's a, it's a pointless degree. It's pointless to, in my opinion, to pursue. Um, what's next? Always a source of anxiety for me, what's next? It always feels like the next project or the next leap until like I actually dive into the water. It feels like I'm standing on the edge of like a 50 foot pool of water and I'm like, eee, I wonder if it's cold in there, you know? It's like it's not till I really dive into it that I know, but I do feel like the work that I'm most interested in that I'm making is video work. I'm most interested in exploring it a little bit further. I like the incorporation of sound, of motion, perhaps even text. Some of my, this new piece I'm working on incorporates text and, um, and creating a different kind of experience for the viewer to look at my work than, you know, a picture in a frame. Samantha. <laughs> so you just, just want me to say my say, name? Yeah, say, hey, I'm Samantha. <laughs> and just, just introduce Okay, don't put that in there. Um, I forgot the questions. What do you want me to... You have to do them one. I live and work. Just who the hell are you? Who are you? I don't know. <laughs> Hi, or what am I supposed to do? I could never be an actress in a million years. <laughs> you just do it enough times that, you know... <laughs> Okay, so what was the question again? I don't know if there was a question. <laughs> <laughs>